Hello and welcome to the latest of my deep dive videos. This one into the astrology of the month of January 2022. I'm going to be looking at the month as a whole, holistically, seeing how it's going to impact on us all collectively. If you'd like to watch your individual zodiac sign forecast for this month, please see the link beneath this video. Now, as usual, I'm going to tell you some key uh, pointers for this month, just to give you an, a, a brief uh, taster, but please stay with me because I will then dive deep and give you in forensic detail all the dates and the key influences you can expect. So as this month begins, we do have a collective of energy in the sign of Capricorn. The sun always here, but Mercury in its pre-shadow period in Capricorn, as it was for the last four days of last year, we also have Venus in that glorious alliance, potentially with Pluto. But of course, Venus is retrograde. What does that mean? I'm going to explore that for you. But we do also have some energy in the sign of Sagittarius, which I will go on to explain. But on the second, we have a sparkling new moon in Capricorn, which forges a very lively link to Uranus, the planet of change and innovation, also in an Earth sign in Taurus. So that points towards us embracing fresh approaches as we burst into this new year. Mercury moves into Aquarius on the 2nd, but it does go retrograde on the 14th. But then, by the 26th, it's back in to the sign of Capricorn. But we have, on the 17th, a full moon in the caring sign of Cancer. But this is particularly critical because it's opposed by not just the Sun, but also Pluto, the planet of change and power. So that's going to have a big impact on the two weeks from that point. The 20th sees the sun make its way into the friendly and democratic sign of Aquarius. But on the 24th, Mars moves into Capricorn and Mars loves being in Capricorn, it's exalted here. So this is brilliant for business uh, development and decisions. Then we have Mercury back into Capricorn, then Venus goes forward motions on the 29th. But there's so much more to tell you about, so please stay with me. But if you are new to my channel, I'd be honoured if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you'd like to order your year 2022 personal horoscope forecast and character analysis based on your time, date and place of birth, no two charts are the same, totally unique to you, please see the link beneath this video. Please don't worry, when you make your order, you will get 12 months from that point. Or if you watch this video before the end of the year, you will get the rest of year 2021 free. This will give you searing insights way beyond your zodiac forecast. Now on the screen now, you can see the chart wheel for the turn of the year and the beginning of January. So, as I mentioned before, the Sun is always in Capricorn at this time of the year. But Mercury is here, and Mercury is the fleet-footed messenger, isn't it? But it is in its pre-shadow period. For the last four days of last year, this began. This means that the point at which Mercury will rewind to in the sign of Capricorn after it's passed through Aquarius included the degrees that we had of its transit through Capricorn at the end of the year. So communication at the start of this year is under a little bit of pressure. Now, of course, you probably know that Venus is retrograde too, and in that conjunction with Pluto. Now, a lot of stores being made about this. The sign of Capricorn, where they're located, is very much about structures. Venus can not just be about relationships, it can be about style, it can be about fashion, it can be about taste, presentation, diplomacy, but crucially, money. And the sign of Capricorn is very much to do with old money. So it's to do with stability, it's to do with those developed structures that we really uh, have a degree of dependence upon. So whether it's very established businesses or ways of doing things, or it could be that it can be around relationships. So those relationships that have been very solid in our life, 
Venus in Capricorn can make us think of those ties. And they don't have to be romantic. They could be any type of relationship in our world where we feel that we have some greater depth or greater meaning because that's what Pluto is bringing to the party. Pluto can be about secrets and it can be about power. So it's possible that with this conjunction, something can be offered, something to do with property, money, or even a relationship or intimate opportunity where there is some kind of leverage being applied, even if it's not terribly obvious. Because Pluto works in a very deep and sometimes subterranean way. So if something's evolving at the start of this year in your situation that seems to be too good to be true, just try to understand what the motive is of the person offering you this wonderful new job, this potential to go out for dinner, this property opportunity. What is there? If there is, is there a catch? Now, it doesn't follow there definitely will be, because with the sun arcing in that 120 degree angle to Uranus, which is very creative, this is pushing us to use our practical resources in a fresh way, to reimagine some of those very traditional and well-established parts of our existence, to update them somehow with Uranus's help. Now, of course, when it comes to January, we often think of the January sales. So I think one of the things this uh, stellar lineup in Capricorn could push us to do is try to look out for those classy items where there is some money off. Now, you'd think there's nothing new in that, Patrick. But what might influence our choices might come right down to the colours, particularly around fashion. So there's more earthy hues of the earth signs. So those browns and those tans uh, could be very, very attractive. Perhaps some sage greens as well. Those very earthy colours could prove to be very popular in this year's January sales. But high value items will have a particular uh, high premium upon them in terms of their desirability. Because Venus and Pluto is about a ramped up desirability. But the, the retrograde of Venus is also about trying to think about our attitude, I think, our relationship, because that's what Venus is about, our relationship to status, our relationship to materialism and consumption, because we can have all these things, and some of those things, in, to a degree, can be very pleasurable. But if our whole existence is predicated on a, a more consumerist way of doing things and being, it can be a little empty. So that takes us to another part of the turn of the year because we do have Jupiter uh, just having moved into the second of its two home zones of Pisces. But Jupiter is in a square with the North Node, which is almost like the spiritual direction of travel of us all collectively. But that's going to be moving on the 18th of January, reversing into the sign of Taurus, where Uranus is. So that's kind of asking us to reimagine again our approach to resources, our approach to money, to find ways of re-relating to our need for any kind of high value item. But also perhaps if we meet someone or we have met someone, we could be tempted to think about, well, what do they earn? What's their role in life? Do they have a particular status? All these things are important, but not at the exclusion of a person's heart, their spiritual values, their decency. And those things are governed quite nicely by the sign of Aquarius, which is where the restrictive energies of Saturn lies at the start of this year. So it's important to understand that friendships can be strained by this collective in Capricorn and the rewinding Venus with the subterranean energies of Pluto where our values do not mesh any longer because Uranus and Saturn, the two rulers of Aquarius, Saturn traditional, Uranus modern, they are in a square as we begin this new month. And they're going to actually be quite prominent through to the end of February. And then they're coming back later in the year uh, within a, a few degrees due to retrogrades. So 
we are going to continue to see, I feel, quite a lot of um, people uh, demonstrating in the streets because they have very different viewpoints to how they view freedom, liberties and constraints. And constraints can come from the fact that Saturn is squaring up with the planet of freedom, Uranus. So more of that to come this month and more of that this year, I feel. But in terms of liberty and freedom, if you go back to that wheel on the screen, you can see that we have the Moon and Mars very closely together in Sagittarius at the start of this month. And the midpoint between the Moon and the Sun in Capricorn is in Sagittarius. So even if we're going about our business, thinking about our goals in life, where we'd like to orientate our ambitions, what are the material gains that we can enjoy through the January sales or perhaps through our work or our abilities or being more entrepreneurial, I think we need to feel that there's a sense of truth and higher meaning to, to the whole process. And that's where that Sagittarius energy comes in. So a fascinating start to the new year. But that square between Jupiter and the North Node means that both are mutable signs. And it means we've got to be realistic in our expectations. We could exaggerate what's possible for us initially. But of course, the North Node will move into Taurus, as I said before, on the 18th. Now, on the 2nd, we have that very vibrant new moon in Capricorn. New moons are an opportunity to set our intentions to be very dynamic, single-minded, and of course the sign of Capricorn is about our direction of travel in terms of our goals. So anything to do with property, jobs, um, maybe those big uh, ticket items can definitely feature in our thinking, but innovation uh, these days is often linked to technology and because you're in this kind of rules technology, I feel, I think we're all going to be perhaps embracing or connecting to the world in a, an evolving way over this next 12 months. And the start of that journey does come from this new moon. But Mercury moves into Aquarius on the same day. But what I would like to tell you is that while some astrologers have put in a lot of emphasis on Venus's retrograde in conjunction with Pluto, we must not forget that in the first 12 days of January, Venus is forging a quite magical link to Neptune. Neptune, the other ruler of Pisces, and the ruler, uh, the influence that's very much to do with projection, photography, film, theatre, uh, compassion, spirituality. And Neptune, in its link to Venus, can create the conditions for something quite magical to happen in terms of a relationship. So we mustn't think that Venus's retrograde with Pluto can only be political and can only be leveraged and can only have a downside. It just isn't true. And then in the second half of this month, Venus moves into a glorious alliance with Uranus. For existing relationships, the first of these two aspects is asking us to honour the gentleness, the kindnesses that get shared between us and those people we care for. It doesn't always have to work through the material sphere. Now, just because Venus is in Capricorn and then goes on to forge that stunning angle to Uranus, that's kind of saying where things have got stale or dull in an existing relationship, how do we reimagine it? How do we evoke that spark of attraction and desire that we had in the early days. Well, it's simply by being very truthful with ourselves. It's not about projecting it onto somebody else. Uranus is the planet of the truth, as well as the sky in mythology. So this ruler of, of astrology is saying by self-analysis, which creates truth and realism in the sign of Taurus, where of course it's not at its best, it's in its fall, in its angle to Venus, we should value what we gain and not just be focused on what we're not getting. But if things have got, become rather predictable and spontaneous, try to change that ourselves, not just expect a partner to change around us. 
Because one of the things I'd say about Venus in Capricorn is that we may see things more about what we get, but it's important to give. So the truthfulness of Uranus is provoking Venus to become more conscious of what we get. But then the frankness of Uranus could lead to some more authentic discussions about how we can revitalize all sorts of ties. But because Venus is about money too, uh, fresher approaches to things, uh, deploying our talents in a, a new way, perhaps outside of a, an older setting that we're more accomplished and more aware of, perhaps because the job's changed because of COVID, finding new ways to use our talents, but also our relating skills to deliver those talents in a way which people can be receptive around. So you can see that Venus has lots of impact on this month, but it's not as, uh, as one dimensional as just being its retrograde in conjunction at the start of the month with the planet of power. You know, it gives us a rich opportunity to really, really appreciate the sweetest of ties. If you meet somebody and you're an earth sign in the first 12 days of this month, it could be a relationship that is very, very impactful on your life for some time to come. I couldn't promise it would be forever, but I think it would be a very important one. Now, the other thing is that by the time Mercury goes retrograde in the sign of Aquarius, which of course is the sector of friendship, it's possible that maybe the value clash between you know, what we value as individuals and what others value that's created by Uranus squaring with Saturn, maybe to begin with, Mercury does help to ease some of those misunderstandings in the early part of this month. But I think then we may find that we're needing to sort the wheat from the chaff when it comes to uh, certain involvements or certain long-term ideas. And then we have, at the start of week two, the conjunction developing between the Sun and Pluto. And that's very much about transformation in a big, practical way. So don't be surprised if we see some big news around the stock market, which uh, old industries, you know, that are very heavy on resources. Pluto is about transformation, but we know that there are certain countries or areas of the world that are pretty committed to not giving up their dependence on old fuels and old uh, technologies. And that's going to be a big talking point because the Earth, obviously Capricorn is an Earth sign, but the globe is covered with water. And then when we have that full moon on the 17th, I think any impact of soiling, you know, of sewerage going into rivers and the sea, plastics going into the seas, there's going to be a big talking point coming up again. I know it's very much in the news agenda anyway, but I thought it's going to be very much to the fore in week three of this month. But the combination of the Sun and Pluto doesn't have to work just in an outer way. It doesn't have to work in a physical way. It can work deep within us. Sometimes when we resist the changes that Pluto is asking us to take on, those changes are forced upon us anyway in ways that we can't control. Pluto is the most remarkable influence. It really is astonishing. I think Pluto has impacted my thinking about astrology more than any other planet. It works at such an incredible level. And however much we try to ride it to our will, it usually decides on what's right for us, even if that's not how we see it at the time. So something could be evolving in your situation. But then, of course, we have the sun moving into Aquarius, where, you know, that's going to be a lovely transit because it's asking us to sort of perhaps come out of the cocoon or... Uh, in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, uh, the hibernation that we can have sometimes in January. So we might start to sort of get our heads up a little bit and get in contact with some of the people that we haven't uh, been able to catch up with since Christmas. And that's really sweet. But that 24th of January Mars bursting its way into its exalted position in Capricorn is fantastic. If you are someone who wants to do better in terms of your resources and materially in 2022, then Venus 
going direct on the 29th is something we're all going to celebrate. And of course, Mercury is rewinding into Capricorn on the 26th. So that's just kind of saying to us that maybe something we experimented with at the start of the year, perhaps a New Year's resolution, might need some kind of modification. But don't beat yourself up if that happens because Mercury retrogrades are often about a degree of speculation, finding things out. Then eventually, when the, sh the post-shadow period unwinds, we can see that where we end up is where we needed to end up. And the information we learnt in the interim actually meant that our choices have changed. It's incredible how often that happens. So just stay with it if that does uh, evolve like that for you. The reversal into Cap Capricorn may see us having to rethink something in a bit more of a realistic way. But that last two weeks of Uranus forging, that sparkling alliance to... Uh, to Venus is just so exciting as is Venus's beautiful trine with Neptune at the start of this month. So I hope that gives you a flavour of what we can expect in January. So we have that Sagittarius energy which is saying find our higher truth. Yes we do need to engage with the physical world which is very Capricornian and also uh, Taurus uh, which is very earthy and but we have to perhaps be aware that change through Uranus and few, few, through Pluto is very much going to be to the fore. And the more we resist it, the more painful it can be. The more we embrace it, the more we can move on and roar into this year in exemplary form. So if you would like to get your a zodiac forecast for each of the 12 zodiac signs please see the link beneath this video but for now wishing you a very happy new year and a great january and thank you so much for joining me